If you are new, welcome. If not, welcome back. Today, we will be going over the photo modes on the iPhone 13 Pro Max, including macro and pro roam. Stay tuned. On the iPhone 13 Pro Max, there is a pro 12 megapixel camera system, telephoto wide and ultra wide cameras, telephoto at f2.8, wide at f1.5 and ultra wide at f1.8 with a 120 degree field of view. Here we are looking at a standard JPEG with the ultra wide camera. It does look a little fake around the edges of the trees, but other than that, it's definitely usable. Now here we are looking at a JPEG with the wide camera. It does not look fake, although it does bring a closer view since it's zooming in. And then here is the telephoto camera. I would actually use this photo since the quality is not that bad. And then here we are looking at a JPEG at 15 times zoom using the telephoto camera and it's still usable although once you start cropping in the image it looks absolutely horrendous here we're going to be looking at raw images show camera control for pro raw pro raw is a 12-bit file that uses the linear dng format to retain more information and dynamic range in the file providing additional flexibility when editing exposure and white balance each file is approximately 25 megabytes is the ultra wide and I think it looks better. Here we're looking at the wide camera shot and here we are looking at the telephoto. I actually like these pictures better than the normal photos. And then here we are viewing this at 15 times with the telephoto lens. And actually I think it looks a lot better than the original. There are night mode portraits enabled by the LiDAR scanner. Here are the night mode portraits starting with natural. The edge detection seems to work here. Studio light. With studio light, the edge detection crops out my ear. Contour light. It actually made my face look artificial and it cropped out my arm on the edge. The edge detection did crop out my ear once again. Another thing to note is I do not look real in this photo. Stage light, it actually kind of cut out the background and it sort of blurred out my arm here. Stage light mono, again it blurred out my arm and it kind of brightened up my face. And then here we have high key mono. Here it looks good from a distance. Looking at the image closer, you can see that the edge detection detected my shirt as an object, which means that it blurred it out, as well as my glasses, it blurred that out as well on the edge here. And then there is portrait mode with advanced bokeh and depth control. And then portrait lighting with six different effects, natural, studio, contour, stage, stage mono, and high key mono. The depth control goes from F 1.4 all the way up to F 16. There are different aspect ratios. Here is four by three and then one by one or square. And then here we have 16 by nine, which is a wider shot. There are different exposure settings that you can adjust inside of the camera. So tap on the little triangle at the top of the camera. And then on the right hand side, there is a little plus and minus button with a circle around it. That is the exposure setting. So here we have negative 2.0 where it's darker, 0.0, .0 which is a little bit brighter, but not as dark. And then here you have 2.0, which is a lot brighter. With the sky here, it's kind of hard to tell that there is differences in the exposure. Now here I brought in my hand to the image and you can start to see that it's a lot darker than the sky before. And this is negative 2.0. And then here we have 0.0, .0. my hand has been done justice, it looks normal. Plus 2.0, the exposure just made my hand absolutely washed out, it looks horrible. I mean, you can still see my hand in the trees, but the sky is bright, my hand is bright, the trees behind it, they're kind of out of focus. I would use the previous two photos with the negative 2.0 and 0.0, .0 but with the exposure set up to 2.0, I would not use this at all. There are also live photos, and here it is turned on automatically, and then here it is on, manually and then here the live option is off there is also quick take video so when you're photographing with your iphone you just press and hold on the shutter button and then drag to the right or to the top however you're holding your iphone and it should turn on automatically and start recording video now you can take the shutter button and press that too the iPhone 13 Pro Max has dual optical image stabilization on the telephoto and wide lens and then sensor shift optical image stabilization on the wide lens. Here I'm going to be testing the stabilization of the cameras and I'm going to do a normal photo for each lens. The clip that was just played is the stabilization of the live photo on the ultra wide lens. I enjoy this one. Here is the wide lens stabilization and it's decent but the sun is blowing the picture out. Here's a telephoto lens stabilization. Actually, I'm pretty impressed. Here's the stabilization of the telephoto lens at 15 times zoom. I can start to see that the camera 
has changed the colors. You can see the blue in the background there and it looks really blurry and awful. Definitely not gonna use this one. There is true tone flash with slow sync and here we have the ultra wide shot and then here we have the wide shot and also the telephoto lens. It's not bad at all, actually. There is a six element lens, telephoto and ultra wide, and then a seven element lens with the wide. And then there is a 63 megapixel panorama, which is a lot larger than the 12 megapixel sensor on the iPhone 13 Pro Max. And then there is a sapphire crystal lens cover, which protects the lenses of the cameras. There are also 100% focus pixels. Essentially, it works by masking a certain number of pixels inside of the camera. The night mode has been improved with the iPhone 13 Pro Max with the LiDAR sensor. And also there are different variations of time on the night mode, such as the automatic setting, three seconds, five seconds, 10 seconds, and all the way up to 30 seconds if your hand is steady enough or you have a tripod or something that will hold the phone in a steady position. Here's the wide camera at zero seconds. And then here is the ultra wide at 0.5 seconds. There isn't really much to see here except for a few specs on the photo, which is intriguing, but nothing crazy. Now we're at the ultra wide with three second timer. This is when the camera starts capturing more color and more details. Here there are different colors. It's like a grayish reddish tinge and it looks beautiful since there's more stars in the photograph. And then here, we have wide camera with a three second timer. Stars seem to be different colors like yellow, orange, blue, purple. There's a three second with the telephoto lens. I did not capture it the same night, so it's a different photo completely. There is a star visible on the right side though. And then here we have the rear camera three times zoom at 10 seconds, which is actually pretty beautiful if you look at it and zoom in just a little bit closer. This is aesthetically pleasing to me. And then here we have 15 times zoom with 10 seconds, it just looks like three specs on something. There's also Deep Fusion on the iPhone 13 Pro Max. So essentially Deep Fusion works behind the scenes when you're taking the photo, like pre-processing photo and then post-processing all at the same time. Combines them and then picks the best one out of the photos that are taken and then shows you that. Here's an attempt using Deep Fusion with the one-time zoom. The blue in the sky is very crisp, along with the green on the leaves here, and it's actually sort of in focus. Now, once I go to three-time zoom, the leaves are more in focus, except for the ones at the forefront are out of focus, and the ones behind it are in focus, and the sky looks beautiful here. Here's another attempt using the wide camera with the Deep Fusion, and it actually has a lot of details on my shirt and face, which is very surprising. Here, we're looking at what Apple calls Smart HDR4 with a higher dynamic range which helps with skin tones, colors, and lighting. Looking at this image here, there is a lot of light and a lot of color going on here, and I kind of like it, but sometimes it can be a little overwhelming with the color and contrastiness. Here's an example of the Smart HDR4 in effect. So for example, I took this picture and it looked dark, but then the processing actually brightened up the image, which is the HDR here. So the iPhone 13 lineup introduced photographic styles. We have normal, and then we have rich contrast with dark shadows and richer colors, vibrant with vivid colors, warm with golden undertones that create a warm look, and then cool with blue undertones, which create a cool look. There's also the introduction of macro photography on the iPhone 13 lineup, and I absolutely love this. It's like a closer look at smaller objects, so it's like a bigger view. And here's an example of the macro photography on this camera. There is wide color capture for photos and live photos on the iPhone 13 Pro Max. Here's lens correction for the ultra wide lens. Here the lens correction is off and then here the lens correction is on. There is advanced red eye correction. The reason that red eye happens while photographing is usually because of the flash and you look at the photo and there's like a red glare in the eye of the subject. And the advanced red eye correction is supposed to minimize that as well as photo geotagging. Here is an example of photo geotagging where I had the location turned on for the camera app. And here you can see that it says World Trade Center. And there's also the option to adjust the location. So tap on adjust. And then here you have the address of the location that the photo was taken at. And then you can tap on no location which would remove the location as shown here. It doesn't show a location. And then tap add a location and you can enter a new location or you can revert back to the original photo location. There's also auto image stabilization. 
So there's also a burst mode for the photos, which I love to use when I see an airplane passing by or a bird or anything that's fast moving that I can't capture quick enough. Here's an example of the burst mode. The image formats captured are HEIF and JPEG. HEIF stands for High Efficiency Image Format and JPEG stands for Joint Photographic Experts Group. HEIF photos are very similar to JPEG photos, but they also take up less space over JPEG photos. The True Depth camera on the iPhone 13 Pro Max has a 12 megapixel camera with f2.2 aperture and there's a normal shot with the True Depth camera and then a wide shot. The normal shot is actually a lot smaller than the wide shot. The normal shot is 7 megapixels while the wide shot is at 12 megapixels. Here's a raw image. The file size is much larger. Live photo. Live photo off. There is portrait mode with advanced bokeh and depth control. There is portrait lighting with six effects. Natural. Natural looks pretty good. Studio. Studio looks pretty good as well and I like how it blurs out the background even more. Contour. Contour makes my face look a bit fake. Stage. Stage did terrible with the edge detection. My ear is not in focus and also my hair. Stage mono. Stage mono looks all right here, although it looks a little cartoonish. Also, the edge detection did not work once again. High key mono. The only complaint I really have about high key mono is the edge detection around my ears once again. So the aperture ranges from f1.4 all the way up to f16. There is also an emoji and Memoji. Here are the different aspect ratios, four by three, one by one or square, and then 16 by nine. And then here are the exposure settings, negative 2.0, it is very dark, 0.0, .0 it's pretty good, not dark and not bright, and then 2.0, very bright and overexposed. There is also night mode. Here is a 10 second timer with the standard lens and you can see around my shirt and my face, it looks very artificial, but it's not bad. Here's a look at the wide lens on the True Depth camera with night mode at 10 seconds. Now you can see more of me, but I still look artificial. It's not bad. Here is a look at deep fusion and there are a lot of details here. Here's smart HDR4 and it brings more color to my face and also the clouds behind me. There are also photographic styles on the True Depth camera. First, normal, rich contrast with darker shadows, vibrant with vivid colors, warm with golden undertones, and cool with blue undertones. There is wide color capture for photos and live photos. And then there is lens correction here. The lens correction is off. And then here, the lens correction is on. And then there is also retina flash and then auto image stabilization. And lastly, there is burst mode for those fast moving subjects. There is also the option for the timer for three seconds and 10 seconds. Now this is great if you wanna get more people into your shot or you have your iPhone on a tripod. Now I actually like this camera. It's not the top of the line, best of the best 108 megapixel or like a 40 megapixel front camera. It's just the basics of the iPhone. 12 megapixels on both the front and the rear. Nothing to complain about really. And I really hope that the next iPhone, the iPhone 14 lineup actually has a higher megapixel front camera and rear camera for more detailed shots and better low light performance. That would be amazing. Now that could be too much to ask for and I don't know what's gonna happen this week at the Apple event. So we'll find out soon. Also, if you watched this far, thank you. And also thank you for taking the time out of your day or night to watch my content or however else you consume it. I really appreciate that. Thank you. I also hope that you have a wonderful day or night wherever you may be. And also, I will see you in the next one. Peace out.